Well, good morning or afternoon now. It's 12.02, 12.03. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this talk webinar to learn more about new resources available to folks interested in organic tradition or transition, production, or just to better understand the organic movement in general. So welcome. I'm Roz Lehman. I'm the executive director with the Iowa Organic Association. So I'm going to quickly provide an overview about the Iowa Organic Association, and then I'll turn the screen over to Allison Waylett, Program Director for Midwest Top Region, and then I'll share a bit about IOA's top priorities and programs, and then introduce you to our new organic farm advisor. The Iowa Organic Association is a nonprofit organization. We were established in 2006. Um, we represent a diverse group of farmers, gardeners, food and farm businesses, consumers and advocates who are working to advance organic agriculture and food systems in Iowa. Let's see, it's not moving forward, here we go, okay. Um, so we work with the organic community by providing a variety of different um, programs and activities. So we'll deliver educational programs that are like field days, webinars, workshops, um, provide technical support. So answering questions that help producers pursue organic. We also have an organic resource directory, a publication that offers a range of organic related businesses and resources. Um, drop a note in the Q&A if you're interested and we can get a copy of that mailed out to you. Um, we also conduct outreach. So we'll be at the PFI conference this weekend. We'll be attending different farm conferences throughout the winter. Um, we have our website, an e-newsletter that goes out a couple times a month, social media, and then we do communicate through direct mail with our members and network. We also conduct advocacy. So we are engaging our members and policy leaders about issues and resources that are important to the organic community. Just this summer, we invited um, Iowa's uh, congressional delegation to organic farms across the state of Iowa and to just connect them to um, different farming practices, practices that are taking place in the state. And then we're constantly building communities. So identifying organic producers or those folks that are looking for more resources and support and just helping build out what, what exists and what is needed um, to support the organic community in Iowa. So that's just, a, I just like for those of you that are new to IOA and to, these, to our webinars, just to have a little bit of background about what we do as an organization. Um, this is where I'll just take a quick break. I'll let Allison pop in and share about the Midwest Top Initiative. And then I'll circle back and talk a little bit about what IOA is doing on, on behalf of the Top Initiative. So I will go ahead and unshare my screen and let Allison share hers. So, well, everybody, good morning, afternoon. My name is Allison Wallent. I work at MOSA, Midwest Organic Services Association, as the program director for Midwest Top. Uh, MOSA was named, and we'll speak a little bit in more detail, but MOSA was named in November of 2022 as the Midwest Regional Lead for uh, the Transition to Organic Partnership Program. And today I'm just going to do a brief overview of the Organic Transition Initiative and talk about where the funds for the Transition to Organic Partnership Program came from. We'll provide a top overview, talk about four main priorities in top, and then uh, we'll pass it back to Roz, who will speak um, more specifically about what's happening with the Transition to Organic Partnership Program in the state of Iowa. And uh, like Roz said, if you have any questions along the way, please drop them in the question and answer. Of course, I'm uh, certainly willing to answer those um, afterwards if you would like to email them to me as well. All right. So uh, we all know about COVID, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in 2020. And one of the things related to the food system that COVID did was it really highlighted the constraints that um, consolidation in the food system uh, causes. So we saw that we were short on toilet paper and a short on some uh, pork products. And um, the government looked at that and said, oh, we really need to address that. We shouldn't have our people in the United States um, having a difficult time accessing those those." Um, 
uh, necessities. So uh, in 2021, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, <laughs> excuse me, was uh, announced, and that uh, act includes, you know, across the across the scope from healthcare to food to uh, transportation. The the way that it comes to the food industry is through the United States Department of Agriculture, and the United States Department of Agriculture was awarded. Um, that two billion is an incorrect figure. It's more forty two billion uh, dollars to the Food System Transformation Initiative. And the Food System Transformation Initiative really looked from farm to package at overhauling our food system and creating space and opportunity for small and mid-sized producers to gain market access, which um, is believed to build resiliency and a greater access on, on the consumer end of that chain. As part of the Food System Transformation Initiative, the Organic Transition Initiative was announced. The Organic Transition Initiative received $300 million, um, unprecedented amount of money to the organic industry, um, specific to serving the Food System Transformation Initiative. So again, the Food System Transformation Initiative, just as a really quick overview, looks at everything from production in the field, what's happening on your farm, to accessing markets and processing, aggregating that supply and distributing it, really trying to shore up that. So we'll we'll see um, how TOP or the transition to our uh, transition to organic partnership program and the organic transition initiative supports that effort in the next slide. So I like to think of the organic transition initiative as a pie, though I'd also believe that the sum of the whole, the sum is greater than the, the sum of the pie. So we have three legs in the organic transition initiative where that $300 million was, was divided equitably across three different uh, funding, governmental funding agencies. The first of which is, is the money that was received by the NRCS. The NRCS has implemented the new Organic Management Standard 823, and uh, that is a direct farmer payment based on the types of crops that are being grown and the um, and the number of acres, of course. So, and it's a three-year payment uh, based on those two things. It is an application process that's currently open. It does take some time, and it's about implementing organic standards on your uh, land. That Organic Management Standard 823 will directly um, support the completion of an organic system plan if you don't already have one. If you are already organically certified, you are also eligible for uh, the um, assistance if you're expanding acres or um, NRCS can hook you up with uh, more of their conservation programs if that's appropriate too. So the um, application process for, for that actually uh, closes in March of 2024. And as I said, it does take some time to complete the application. So I encourage you to reach out to your NRCS office as soon as this call ends to learn more about uh, that part of the Organic Transition Initiative. The second leg of the Organic Transition Initiative is specific to the organic market development. And this rolled out uh, in the summer of 2023 as a grant process. There was a uh, competitive application process that closed in August. And I'm hearing that those and the announcements of the awards for the grant should happen any day now. We're expecting a formal announcement within the, oh, I would say by the end of January for sure. Um, those are, they, the awards were geared towards uh, grains in, in specifically, but other um, commodities were welcome to apply as well. And it is really looking at building that uh, market access piece which is critical to growing organic farms, which leads to the transition into organic partnership program. The uh, transition to organic partnership program is also awarded $100 million across the United States. And the, it is a service program that is geared to provide wraparound support to farmers as they uh, embark on their transition to organic um, management. 
we'll speak about that uh, quite a bit. We'll spend the rest of the slides talking about um, the Transition to Organic Partnership Program, or TAP. So I had mentioned in my in my opening slide that I'm employed by MOSA. MOSA's, MOSA was named one of six leads across the United States to lead the work. You can see the six regions here on the screen. The, um, the National Organic Program divided the nation into these regions. We're in the Midwest region. You can see that includes Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. I always say typically not thought of as Midwestern states, but the thought process behind that was to combine um, states that have that are well represented and well experienced in organic agriculture with those that have a little more opportunity for growth. So looking at states in, in our region like Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and pairing those with Arkansas and Tennessee in, in particular to help really lead them into a greater organic space. The second thing that they looked at when they were naming the lead organizations is that the organizations had, because they're looking at organic certification, they were looking at the largest nonprofit organic certifier by client base in each region. That that organization needed to be in good, good accreditation standing and also have the capacity to scale as we led this work. The Midwest was awarded $13.6 million over five years to lead and implement the Transition to Organic Partnership Program. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see here on this slide that we are building a coalition of partners. So I live in Southwest Wisconsin and felt that an 11 state region in order to be really successful across the Midwest needed to in involve a number of partner organizations to reach all corners of each state. I started the work by identifying core partner organizations in, the, in Iowa. Those two core partners are Iowa Organic Association and the Iowa State University. You can see the other lead organizations for the other 10 states listed to the right on your screen. Because there's so much work to be done in this space, those core partners who have been instrumental in driving programming and setting up the parameters of the program um, have been encouraged to, in, to reach out and to include other organizations that will help us lead the work in each one of these states. So the additional uh, Iowa partners listed on your on your screen are supporting partners <clears throat> to the Iowa Organic Association and Iowa State University. So what exactly are they leading? We have four main priorities for top, farmer mentorship, technical assistance, community building, and workforce development. Under farmer mentorship, we're seeking uh, experienced organic farmers for a one-year uh, commitment to offer their expertise to an, a farmer who is learning about organic. We do have a minimum hour expectation of 45 hours over the course of the year, and the mentor will be compensated for their expertise. We also encourage uh, co-conference attendance and would expect each a mentor pair to visit their mentee and mentor farm one time per year. Each of our partner organizations will be working with the mentors and mentees to pair um, like-sized organizations with similar uh, growing uh, production methods and similar crops. The application process for this is now open and I'm sure Roz will speak a little bit more about mentorship in just a minute. Um, the other thing that I'll add for mentorship is it really is seen as the corner um, stone of the top program. We recognize that we learn best from those that have, you know, walked in our shoes and um, are really trying to celebrate that opportunity to build community and networks within the organic industry by learning from each other. We also are focused on technical assistance through field days and one-to-one -one organic system plan support. We are working on community building that we'll see um, in activities such as conference attendance or round tables or coffee chats, um, really looking at building and strengthening that network 
um, strengthening the fabric of the local community and bringing programs closer to you instead of expecting you to travel three or four hours to a conference all the time. And then the last of the of the major initiatives under the Transition to Organic Partnership Program is the workforce development. We recognize that we have an opportunity to grow organic acumen in areas like extension and at the NRCS, and we need more inspectors and we need more organic reviewers. So we're looking at how can we help expand the organic industry by shoring up the organic workforce also. And that really is going to start with outreach at the high school level to FFA and 4-H through colleges, universities, technical colleges into the workforce. So with that, I'd like to turn over to Roz to speak specifically to how TAP is being implemented in the Midwest, or excuse me, in Iowa. Resharing my screen. Thank you, Allison. Okay, back where we left off. Let's see. Well, okay. So for TAP in Iowa, First of all, we are so grateful for this partnership with TOP to the USDA, the NOP, and Congress for recognizing the demand, value, and interest for expanding organic practices across the United States. One of the things we are most excited about is hiring the Organic Farm Advisor. We have been exploring opportunities over the past four years to find long-term funding to hire an organic technical advisor to support Iowa's organic community. This partnership will help fill a much needed gap for organic technical support in Iowa. So with the, the what, what is the organic farm advisor's role? Um, Susanna will provide point of contact support for questions or support related to organic transition, certification, production, or any of your organic related questions. Additionally, um, she will be leading, developing and leading our organic mentorship program and delivering education and outreach activities to increase farmer knowledge and confidence in organic production. So as Allison mentioned, and I just mentioned the organic mentorship program, um, Susanna is already hitting the ground, um, connecting producers with each other in terms of identifying um, what, who, what mentors are available and what mentees and what they're looking for. So that process has already began. Um, she is working to connect seasoned Iowa producers with new and beginning farmers interested in organic production. So if you or someone you know is interested in providing mentorship or receiving that support um, in their organic journey, please reach out to me or Susanna and we will work with you to find the resources that you need. Um, we will continue to um, develop and deliver field days and webinars to expand organic educational programs to share practices, resources, regional connections, to further enhance mentorships and expand the organic community. We'll be offer, offering some technical workshops that will uh, provide background on the NOP standards and guidelines. Um, what does it take to become certified and what does an in, um, inspection pro process look like? Or what is a typical or average organic production system in Iowa and in the Midwest? So uh, keep an eye out for uh, those types of learning opportunities. We will continue to do the outreach at conferences and through our um, electronic means. Uh, but to pair off of what Allison mentioned in terms of the workforce development, we are actively working with colleges and universities all across the state to deliver organic presentations um, in the classroom and invite those classrooms out to organic farms. Um, we've already, over the last three years, reached 25 schools with these programs. And so we look forward to being able to continue reaching um, students at the college and university level. And then a natural part of this process is growing the organic community. Um, so identifying farmers and stakeholders who can support each other in, um, in Iowa and in their own kind of micro regions. Um, and then I will mention, as um, Susan or as Allison mentioned, that the Iowa State Organic Program, Iowa State Extension, is also a partner in the top effort, and will be working to expand top resources in Iowa too. 
Um, Allison touched on the, uh, the NRCS organic management standard. I will just reiterate, um, we're really excited about this um, fun financial resource for um, transitioning and organic producers. Um, it's a great, what I've been calling safety net for transitioning producers to provide some additional financial support while they're learning a new production system, um, when they when they can't receive organic premium for the crops they're growing. Um, it's just that three-year transition period is a really tough time. And this um, OMS 823 can really help farmers um, fill that gap in terms of the expenses that are going out and maybe not coming back in during, during that transition period. For organic um, certified producers, I think it's, um, I like to characterize it as an ecosystem payment. So we're looking at all of the benefits that organic production is putting back into the land in terms of conservation pra practices, ecosystem services, and just protecting the environment. Um, so as Allison mentioned, it's, it's open and available to transitioning and certified producers. Um, I didn't know there was a March deadline, so glad to know that's happening, but I would also encourage folks, it's a rolling application. So even if you miss that March deadline, pop or go into your NRCS office and start having the conversation and get your application in for the next time there's a funding pool to be allocated. Um, contracts are either three to five years. Um, it's a pretty good range in terms of um, payments for the types of practices that are um, that you're doing on your farm. And I would say that five criteria that you must meet in order to be considered for one of the uh, OMS 823 contracts is that you can demonstrate you're either certified or in transition, that you are implementing diverse rotations, that you have a wet, a weed, pest and soil erosion management plan. And from there, there are some additional criteria if you are going above and beyond those basic five checkoffs, and that could um, enhance your contract amount um, depending on what you're doing on your farm. So uh, I, our organization has been working with the NRCS to help provide this information out to for our networks, but also supporting the, a lot of training. And so we're helping um, work with these county offices and, and them working with organic producers because they haven't worked with a ton of producers um, over, over in general. So we're just kind of helping bridge that gap and hopefully encourage greater interest and in completion of those OMS 823 co contracts. So what I'll leave you with there is if you go into your office and the, they might not have heard of it or they, um, Aren't, aren't prepared to support you or help you through that process, get a hold of IOA. We can help work through that application process with your county office or maybe find an office that has successfully completed an application so we can help keep you moving forward in, uh, in securing those contracts or, or um, expressing interest in, in that funding opportunity. Um, you can see her here. It's Susanna Cabrera Maritz. Um, she will be providing technical support for the organization. So that one-on-one, -on -one, um, being able to answer those questions, but also helping deliver educational outreach programs. But going back to the organic mentorship piece, provide most importantly, providing that program to connect um, producers with, you, with each other to um, encourage greater organic production in Iowa. I am gonna pause for a second and I'm gonna let Susanna jump in and say hello and share um, anything you would like to about your background or the program or the work you've been doing so far. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to meet everyone. Um, as Law said, I'm Susanna. Um, I just graduated from ISU and I've been in Iowa for about five years. Um, I primarily work as a vegetable grower and a seed producer. Um, so those are my specialties. Um, and I'm really excited to be joining you all. Um, so far, I've been working with mentors and signing mentees up and starting to connect people. So, so excited you're here. Um, as always, you could reach out to me. Uh, my email is Susanna at iowaorganic.org if you have any questions. Oh, there we go. Uh, so feel free to reach out. Um, I already see some questions in the chat. So this is great. Thank you all. 
Thank you, Susanna. And thank you, Allison. Um, with that, I think that was providing us a, or you all a good overview about top um, nationally as regionally and here in Iowa. So we were hoping that you guys had some questions, um, anything that we can share. If you're interested in a mentorship, um, please reach out to Susanna. But this is an opportunity now to ask any questions or share any comments you might have about top. And I'll let Susanna kind of trio, triage those questions for us. Let's see. Okay, so Allison wants us to remember that the top website is organictransition.org. Um, so keep that in mind. We have a couple questions I've been answering as we've been going along. Uh, the first one is, are we presenting at PFI this year? Uh, great question. We are not presenting, however, we are tabling. So please stop by and say hi. Um, Joe is asking about whether um, his soil and water conservation districts are managing um, the 823. And the answer to that is um, they're doing promotions, but NRCS is um, the management office for that. Um, and then Ruth is asking, is the top mentee program the same program as ISU Organic Mentee? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. They're project partners. Um, and I think they're online today with us. So um, we're excited to have them here. Um, if there's any more questions, feel free to, oh wait, here we go. Um, what criteria do you look at when partnering mentors with mentees in Iowa? Um, so typically what I'm looking at is I'm looking at specialties. So if there's a specific crop that someone's working with um, that they have questions about, um, I try to um, put those two people together. Again, region, um, making sure that people are in the same region so they can actually get to know one another and visit each other's sites. Um, and then communication styles um, and needs. Um, those are two other ones. So making sure that if somebody has maybe ha more high needs, um, that they're able to work with somebody who has plenty of time. Um, and then also communication. If somebody has a very specific communication style they're looking for, I try to partner those people together. Um, and then Ruth has a question. Is there an opportunity to work with both the landowner and the farmer transitioning to organic? I've been talking briefly with Roz about lease language and profit sharing. Um, yeah, there is actually, um, there is an opportunity both to work with the landowner and the farmer transitioning. Um, that was a more nuanced conversation. Um, so definitely reach out. Um, we can do it, but it would just require a little finessing um, of that partnership. Uh, Denise says, is the program oriented to small or large farms, green or vegetable slash fruit farms? We're open to everyone. Um, and so it just depends. Whatever you, whatever your needs are, please come. We will have somebody who can work with you. Um, so where I'm trying to make sure that it is diverse and it is um, that we're able to help everyone. Okay. And I'll pop in and regarding PFI this weekend, um, we're not presenting per se. However, the, there is a short course that PFI is offering on Thursday afternoon and Friday morning that's specifically focused on organic transition. So if that's something that you're looking for at PFI, that could be an, an option that you might want to explore. I don't know if it's too late to sign up for that course or not. Um, but again, we'll be at the conference at our table. So please stop by and say hi. And we'll have materials and resources available there as well. Right. Any other questions? Oh, there's one more, Susanna. As the transition enters its final stages, does the program recommend what certifying agency to certify with? We do not. We allow, it's a open to, you're able to use whoever you want to use. Um, and so that's an important component of the program that you're able to work with who's going to work best with you. The great question. And I would jump in and say, we always recommend reaching out to two or three certifiers. They all have a little bit different process, fee scale, um, just the paperwork that they um, require. So it is good to kind of hear what the different options are to help you better identify what works best for you on your farm. And just a response to the PFI question for the short chorus, which I highly recommend, I will be there. Um, it's not too late. You could do walk-in registration. So please come by.
Any other questions? Denise, the monetary incentive, are you referring to the mentorship program or to the organic management standard 823? Actually, both. So for the mentorship, there is a set amount of $3,000 for the mentor to provide the mentor mentoring services. Um, and that's an annual contract. And then um, for the OMS 823, each farm is unique. So that process will be determined, the, the um, price per acre will be determined um, after you go through your application process and you work with your NRCS office. Um, and that they'll be able to um, work with you to determine what that per acre price is um, for the organic management standard. All right, Tom, Tom, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Go Tom Wynn says, I called my local NRCS office and they said that they are familiar with the 823 program, but have not helped with an application yet. However, they stand ready to help a new applicant. Um, that's We've heard that from several people that there's, there's a lot of interest and NRCS is super excited to help out. Um, again, if you if your local office um, needs some help with that or you call and they need some help, feel free to reach out um, and we're happy to um, answer any questions. Tom, I so Tom asks what a typical corn soybean farmer would get paid per year. So the contract prices range from two hundred and ten dollars an acre to fifteen hundred dollars an acre, and the two hundred dollars an acre are more looking at your typical corn soybean grain production. Fifteen hundred dollars an acre is would be an example of a food producer like vegetables on a much smaller piece of land. So it's recognizing you're you're doing this producing a lot of food on less acres. Um, and that is just, a, that slides from that 200 all the way up to the 1500. Um, and again, it's just um, how diverse your rotations are. Do you have livestock on your farm? Are you implementing other conservation practices like um, prairie strips? Um, what are you planting in your buffers? There's just so many um, unique circumstances that can vary that payment amount. And um, to be honest, I feel like that's also um, contingent on that conversation between you and your NRCS office. Um, so it's like working with them to demonstrate uh, the above and beyond that you're doing within your standard organic rota um, rotation. Pablo says for top mentorships, are there any specific needs mentioned by potential mentees that they need most help with? Um, so far, I'm finding that folks are having trouble with crop rotations um, and um, I would say crop rotations in their certification process, just making, feeling confident in their certification process. So they're going through, they're doing all the work, but um, there seems to be some questions about that. Got one more from Denise. Denise says, what are the market op marketing opportunities? Did I understand markets are being developed as a program unfolds? Markets are important for, har for the hard work of organic growing. Yes, you can say that again. And Roz, Allison, you want to take that one? Yeah, Allison, Allison do you want to jump in? Yeah. Sure, I can take that one. So the organic uh, market development grant, which is one third of the organic transition initiative is focused on building uh, organic markets and, and hopefully through that granting process and the development of those markets, there will be greater access for producers. Um, certainly, this is something that we talk about quite often with the NOP that uh, leading more producers to organic will not be successful if we don't also have markets. So um, certainly uh, provide that feedback to your Congress people, and uh, we will keep working towards um, codifying some of these um, monetary um, programs through the Farm Bill. 
Allison, I believe last year's grant period ended somewhere in June, and I could be wrong on that because we had a lot of deadlines last year. Do we know about another granting period for the organic market development um, for 2024? Yeah. You're right, Roz. The, um, the initial period ended in June, and then they expanded extended it uh they extended it to August 8th so it did close on August 8th I haven't heard whether the um announcement of the there will be another organic management grant process I I don't want to speculate um I think that it will depend on how much how much of that 100 100 million they award in this first year it, most of the projects are you know 3 to 5 year projects for implementation Okay, let's see. There's a couple follow-up questions. Um, one person is asking, please list the top organic crops grown in Southern Iowa. Can you talk about sales and marketing? Um, Ruth, could you give us a little bit more, uh, a more specific question with that? Um, and while you're doing that, I'll jump over to Denise, who says, this is important when rotating crops with oats or rye and other small grains. Good point. Yes, Denise, that's true. Um, Tom Wynn says, are there any minimum requirements for corn or soybean farmers to have a successful application, i.e. cover crops, slugger rotations, et cetera, for corn beans to have a successful application? Do you mean application of or the organic standard? If so, then yes. Um, typically what we need is, uh, well, longer rotations are always nice. Um, the more diversified your crops can be, that means that you're typically adding different nutrients into your soil which is important for your, your crops to be able to uptake nutrients. Um, it's also important for your soil structure um, and health. Um, so there's there are important considerations. It's very much um, dependent on your farm and your soil types. Um, so that's something we could talk about more. If you have any specific questions, I can go into a little bit more depth with you. And I'm going to jump in and add... Um... Right now, Tom, there are not a lot of applications. So I feel like if you're interested in submitting an application, now would be the time to go in and you're most likely going to be funded um, unless you're really not hitting those different key, um, air, those five key points on the application. I feel like, and these applications, um, that they're ranked much like the equip program is ranked. How, but that goes back to the fact that we're not getting a lot of applications. Um, so the likelihood of you being funded if you meet those minimum criteria are higher at this point. I could say maybe two years down the road when the word's out a little bit more, little bit uh, more, and folks are applying at a higher rate, that ranking um, bit is going to come into play a lot more and can and can definitely oh. impact um, who's getting funded. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted. Hopefully that answers your question a little. I, so I'm encouraging folks to get in there and have those conversations early um, before, you know, the interest and in folks start applying at a higher rate. Yeah. Ruth is asking, do you help source organic fertilizers list for manures? Um, at this point, we don't help people source those things. However, we can always um, recommend um, different resources for you um, and also oh. connect you with folks who, who might have those. Absolutely. We have our organic resource directory. Um, if folks know of uh, businesses that we should be adding to that as a resource, that's one place to look. Iowa Organic Association also has a list serv. So Iowa Organic at simplelist.com is a way to reach out to other organic producers in Iowa and in the region with some questions like you have right here, just to gain a little bit of farmer to farmer support. Um, and with your question, we can take that offline and ask around a little bit and see if we can follow up with some folks specifically in your area that could be helpful um, in, with your fertilizer needs, Ruth. And to answer, we've got some people jumping in here. Um, Ruth was asking, can you list the organic crops? And thank you, Kim. Kim jumped in and said um, some oats, wheat, rye, and buckwheat. Um, she's in Southeast. Um, Iowa and alfalfa as well. Yes, uh, this is a great question. Can you reintroduce Kenna? I'm curious about her unfolding work. Take it away, Kenna. <laughs> Hi, 
have to unmute here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, I'm Kenna. I'm the new education outreach coordinator. I joined on about the same time as Susanna. So super excited to be here. I'm currently focused on um, the webinar series, winter webinars. So there's about six in the works, um, the next one next week. So be sure to check those out. Um, and I'll also be at PFI this weekend. If anyone's going to be there as well, please stop by the booth and say hi. Great questions, guys. Let's see. If you have any more, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We have lots of people jumping in. So if you can answer a question, please do so. I don't want to cut anybody off, but it looks like um, it looks like we're coming to a close. Uh, a lot of the questions, I believe all of our questions have been addressed. So one last shot, if you have something else you want to throw out, make sure you do that. Tom, Tom just shared that it would be helpful if Susanna had a list of organic fertilizer, manure, compost su suppliers in Iowa um, to to point or to connect farmers with those resources. I think that's a great suggestion. And um, we will look at a separate list as well as enhancing the organic resource directory with those resources as well. Thank you, Tom. And with that, I will thank all of you guys for attending today and learning more about the USDA top program. I'll thank our presenters, Allison and Susanna and Kenna for being here today and providing support for the work that we're doing. And we encourage you to reach out to any of us um, if you have questions or need more resources or just want to learn more about organic in Iowa. So thank you again for being here and we look forward to seeing you at our, at our next event. Have a great day.